the definition of the Quran. And you have to know for certain that this book is authentic. And you have to know who preserved this authenticity and by what methodology this Quran is preserved. So when you buy the Quran, read the introduction first. So that you know and you understand the message as a whole and the intentions of the Quran as a whole, inshallah. I just came back from Perth, Australia. All this speaking to the people in Perth about Islam and I stress more about the Quran. And I was saying to the people in Perth, Australia that you have got many kangaroos here. And they were laughing to me. Well, if I were to ask you one simple question, brothers and sisters in Perth, describe to me the kangaroos. Describe to Dr. Daniel the kangaroos. Well, the correct way of describe, description of this kangaroo is to describe to me in the form of a big picture. That the kangaroo as a whole is, and that's the correct way of describing something. But of course, certain people have his own way of describing a certain thing. So some may come to Dr. Daniel and say, well, the leg of the kangaroo is very small. The leg of the kangaroo is very thin. He or she is not describing the kangaroo as a whole. He or she is just describing one leg of the kangaroo. It is not the kangaroo, but the leg of the kangaroo. Thus, Dr. Daniel loses the big picture of the kangaroo. The same goes with the Quran. When we describe the Quran, we have to describe the whole concept of the Quran, not just talking about Tajweed in Abata Sajaha and in Old Ban Bin Bod. Bukan itu saja. Tapi itu yang asyik kita bicarakan. Di Malaysia, Alhamdulillah, asasnya kukuh. Kita hantar anak kita pergi mengaji. Itu suatu budaya yang baik. Sejak kecil, walaupun ibu itu bodoh agama, Bapa itu toyol di rumah, toyol, a real toyol in the house, tak faham apa, tak solat yang lima, a real toyol dengan maaf. Tetapi walaupun mereka teruk, anak-anak ini dihantar untuk mengaji Quran di madrasah, di musola, di masjid ataupun di rumah guru-guru Quran tertentu. Tetapi penekanannya ialah seperti kengguru, hanya pada satu kaki daripada kangaroo dia tekankan hanya pembacaan ya satu kaki pun penting tetapi apabila sampai ketua penekanannya hanya satu kaki kangaroo di situlah kesilapan kita dari kecil kita tekan tajwid dah tua nak mati nak masuk kubur tajwid lagi akhirnya masuk Ramadan Tadarus Ibu-ibu mari kita bertadarus Di masjid kita Bapa-bapa mari kita bertadarus Di surau kita Anak-anak pun turut bertadarus Maka semua tadarus Yasin Wal-Quranil Hakim Lepas Ramadan Tak baca terus Masa Ramadan tadarui Orang utara Lepas Ramadan tak baca terus Satu kaki kanguru tak cukup So we have to understand the Quran Al-Quran diturunkan oleh Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Kepada Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Quran is being sent by Allah to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And the Prophet Muhammad were called certain companions of the Prophet to write the Qur'an. Most famous are Zaid bin Thabit, Abu Bakar Siddiq, Umar al-Khattab, Ali bin Abi Talib, Uthman ibn Hafan, Mu'ad bin Jabal, Mu'awiyah bin Abu Sufyan, and so on and so forth. They came to Prophet Muhammad, 
and the root, what the prophet read to them, and the key, what has been written. And then, when the Quran has been completed, so these manuscripts, now we are talking about manuscripts, the Quran in your hands are not manuscripts. Those are books been published by publishers. Of course, they follow the manuscripts, but they are not manuscripts. The manuscripts are the original writings in front of Prophet Muhammad. These originals are called as manuscripts, and these are very important when we talk about history of the Quran. So these manuscripts is being kept by the first caliph. That is Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an. He kept the whole manuscript of the Quran. One day, Omar al Khattab radiallahu an came to Abu Bakr and said, You know, the companions of the Prophet who memorized the Quran, many have been dead because of wars and battles. I'm afraid that, that if we do not take this manuscript of the Quran, and write the Quran again based on this manuscript, I'm afraid that this manuscript will be lost. And the Muslims who are coming after us, they will be in the loss because we lost the Quran. Thus, Abu Bakr, please rewrite this manuscript so that it becomes something very authoritative based on the first manuscript so that we can keep it for long. So Abu Bakr al siddiq called Zaid bin Thabit because Zaid bin Thabit was the person who write or who wrote most of the contents of the Quran. So he rewrote the Quran and for every verse he called two companions to just prove or to give evidence to be the witness that this verse is really the verse being asked by Prophet Muhammad for the for the Sahaba to write. This is the true verse. I'm going to write Yasin wal Quran al Hakim. Two witnesses for each verse to say to Zaid bin Sabit, yes, yes. Wallahi, I memorized the verse from the Prophet, and this is the verse given to us by the Prophet from Allah. So for every verse, two witnesses have to be there. So you see the methodology? You see the methodology? For every verse, he needs two witnesses. So this is the manuscript. And once they have rewrote everything, so after Abu Bakr passed away, the manuscript was being given to the second caliph, that is Omar al-Khattab. And when the second caliph passed away, the manuscript was given to Hafsa, a woman. This shows that Islam puts women on a high status. Because once upon a time in the era of the companions of the Prophet, a woman by the name of Hafsa kept the most authoritative reference of Islam, that is the Quran. The Quran in its original form was once in the hands of a woman. So woman in Islam has a high status according to the Quran and Sunnah. Those who look down upon women in Islam, they are not true Muslims.